SF6 circuit breaker is one of the most cost effective solution available to break the huge fault current. SF6 gas does a perfect job in quenching the arc generated by the huge fault current. And no doubt why they dominate the high and extra high voltage switchgear market as of now. In this video, we are going to break down the working principle of SF6 circuit breaker step by step. So in the previous video, we talked about how vacuum circuit breaker works and on that video, many of you commented that you also want to know about how SF6 circuit breaker works. And based on those comments, here is the video, dedicated video on SF6 working. Now before we go and talk about how SF6 circuit breaker work, uh, let us first understand why do we need circuit breaker. Now there will be situation when we need to break the current flowing into our system. It could be uh, maybe you want to switch something or maybe there is a fault. In such scenario, we need to open uh, the current that is flowing into the system. Now how we can do it? Of course by using uh, with the help of switch or the circuit breaker. So imagine uh, we have a circuit breaker contacts like you can see on your screen. It is closed that means current is flowing into the system. Now there is uh, some fault and the contact has opened. Now the moment the contacts are opened, the arc is stuck. The arc will stuck 100%, no doubt about that. The arc is inevitable. It's going to get stuck the moment the contact is open. The only difference is that the intensity of the arc. So if the current is low, which is in the case of let's say the low voltage uh, applications, the arc intensity will also be low. It is directly proportional with the current. But if let's say there is a fault and the current is very, very high, the intensity of current is high, then the arc intensity would also be very high. Now in case of low current, low voltage application, we don't need to have any special medium to break that arc, right? The regular switch will be able to take care of that. But as we go towards the high voltage, uh, I'm talking about 36 kV, 52 kilo volts, maybe 145, 245 and above. In that scenario, the fault current is huge. Certainly even uh, the normal current that flows into the system is also very high. So definitely we need to have some sort of special arrangement, some special media which will help us in quenching this arc. We saw vacuum is one of that methodology that we use. So we place uh, the contact inside an empty space like vacuum. And when the contact open because of the vacuum, the dielectric strength increases and the arc is quenched. So that is one type of special arrangement. Similar to that, SF6 is also one type of special arrangement, the SF6 gas we can provide which will help us in quenching the arc. And this is the whole purpose why the circuit breaker is very, very important in terms of power system because the regular switch will not be able to, you know, take care of the arc that is getting stuck uh, when the fault occurs. So that for that very purpose, we need to have circuit breaker in the system. Now, if that is clear, you understood why we need circuit breaker. Now, let us understand how this SF6 circuit breaker works, how SF6 help in quenching the arc. First, it is important that we understand why there is an arc. Well, the arc is getting stuck because there are free electrons present in around the contacts that we are separating. And as a result, because of this free electrons, the moment the contacts are separate, uh, the air within this or the free electrons within this will get ionized because there is voltage pressure act from both the end and voltage as per the basic laws that we know will try to maintain the constant current. So it will for sure try to keep that current flowing through the system. And as a result, all the free electrons get ionized and the arc will stuck. Clear? So we can say that uh, for sure the main reason why arc is getting stuck is because of these free electrons that are present in the vicinity of the contacts in the separated contacts the solution to do uh, to this uh, is maybe if we can somehow take out all the free electrons around these contacts somehow we can address this free electrons uh, around the contacts then maybe the arc will not stuck and that's exactly what we do in the vacuum circuit breaker. We place the contacts in an empty space where there are no sufficient electrons to maintain the arc between the contacts. Well, that is one way and very, very efficient way. We talked about that in our previous video. If you haven't seen that, uh, you can go and check it out after this video. I'll provide a link for it down in the description. 
So vacuum is one way to take out or address these free electrons. Well, SF6 gas is another way to address these free electrons. Well, the speciality of the SF6 gas is that SF6 gas is an electronegative gas, which means that it has a property, it has a basic property to attract the free electrons from the atmosphere. So wherever you spread the SF6 gas, it will attract the free electrons in the atmosphere. That's the basic property of the SF6 gas. And that's what we do. Let's take one example. So let's say we are placing the contacts of circuit breaker inside one cubicle, which is filled with atmospheric air. And this is the regular condition where the current is flowing. Now, if there is a fault, definitely I'll open the contacts. The moment I open the contacts, the arc will stuck. It, it is inevitable. You cannot avoid it. Now the arc is there because we have free electrons around this contacts. Now, as I said, if we can address this, if we can take care of this free electrons, then the arc will not be able to sustain, arc will quench. And that's what we are doing uh, in the SF6 circuit breaker with the help of SF6 gas. What we will do, we'll fill the SF6 gas inside the container, of course, at a certain pressure uh, because the dielectric strength of the SF6 gas depends upon the pressure of that gas. So at a certain pressure, we are filling the SF6 gas inside this cubicle. The moment uh, the contact separated, the arc is uh, stuck, no doubt about that. And then we will blast the SF6 gas onto the arc and the SF6 gas will take out all the free electrons which are there. And when the next current zero appears, where the current intensity becomes low, uh, the arc will quench, right? That is how the SF6 circuit breaker works. Now, if we are talking about uh, the construction part of the contacts, it's certainly very, very different when we compare it with the vacuum technology that we learned in the previous video. So the contact design is like this, what you can see on your screen. So the outer part is the porcelain insulator. Inside that we have fitted the contact system and of course it is filled with the pressurized SF6 gas. So the blue shade that you can see here, this one and this one is basically the main contacts which is carrying the regular system current that is flowing in the system. The brown shade contacts are specifically meant to carry the huge fault current. And of course, the arc will stuck between these two contacts only. Arc will not stuck in the main contact. Now, this is the closed position and the current is flowing in the system. Now, you can see both the contacts are closed. Now, since the resistance of the main contact is much lower, uh, the current will choose to flow from this path and not from the arcing contact. Clear? Now, let's say there is a fault in the system. The relay will sense it and the command is given to the circuit breaker. The contact starts separating. You can see the con main contact has separated, but still uh, the arcing contacts are in touch with each other, right? They are not yet separated. So what will happen is uh, the huge fault current will be transferred to the arcing contact because this contact uh, is separated. So all the fault current will start flowing through the main uh, arcing contact. Now after some time, of course, the arcing contact will also be separated. And the moment these contacts are separated, the arc will stuck in between the arcing contact. Now, the moment the arc is stuck, uh, what we do with the help of nozzles, now in that there will be nozzles present, we put the gas or we concentrate the SF6 gas on the arc itself. As a result, as the because of the basic property of the uh, SF6 gas, the electronegativity, it will take out all the free electrons in the vicinity of this. And as a result, at the next current zero, uh, the arc will extinguish, right? We have cleared the fault successfully. And that's how the SF6 circuit breaker operates. But here, uh, again, there is one more important point that you must understand. The moment the arc is, uh, the contacts are separated, the arc is stuck, the rate of rise of recovery voltage or the transient recovery voltage will come into picture. As a basic property, as a basic law, this transient recovery voltage or the RRRB will try to maintain the constant current from the system. And as a result, it will try to maintain, uh, it will try to keep the arc flowing in the system. It will try to keep the arc uh, stuck in the contacts. So in such scenario, if the rate of rise of recovery voltage is higher than that of the rate of rise of dielectric strength, then 
the arc will stuck 100% again arc will reignite after the current zero and this is not a good situation this is the failure of the circuit breaker the current is still flowing in the system the huge fault current is still flowing in the system this can damage the whole equipment that we are connecting in the system why this is happening let us understand one more time the reason is uh, at the current zero the arc is quenched but since the rate of rise of recovery voltage is higher than that of the rate of rise of dielectric strength or the insulating strength around this contact the arc arc is reignited as a result uh, the arc is not clear the fault is not clear the current is still flowing in the system so as a design engineer it is very very important for us uh, to design a circuit breaker in such a way that the dielectric strength is always higher than that of the rate of rise of recovery voltage so in the race between the rate of rise of recovery voltage and the rate of rise of dielectric strength the rate of rise of dielectric strength must always win and only and only then uh, we can say the current has interrupted the arc has quenched successfully and the breaker is good breaker basically so you see when the rate of rise of recovery voltage is lower and the rrds is higher the arc is quenched the arc will not reignite again and this is the successful interruption clear so that's how the sf6 circuit breaker operates and that's how the arc is quenched now let us quickly summarize the different steps involved in the fault clearing process of sf6 circuit breaker so first of all the fault is detected by the relays and command is given to the circuit breaker yes of course because breaker high voltage breaker do not have their own brain so relay will sense and give the command for breaker to trip the main contact separates which transfers the current to the arcing contact as we have seen in the image in the previous slide the arcing contacts open after the main contacts and the arc is established between that now pressurized sf6 gas flows through the nozzle concentrate on the arc and it takes out all the free electrons and definitely uh, it will quench the arc because there are no sufficient free electrons available for arc to reignite or arc to continue to flow right and sf6 gas also has an excellent cooling mechanism so it will cool the arc very quickly so that is also a very good property of the sf6 gas and once that is clear the arc will completely extinguish the fault will clear current will stop flowing into the system so that is how uh, the current interruption takes place now sf6 gas offers a lot of advantages as i mentioned uh, it is one of the most uh, reliable also and the efficient way of interrupting the huge fault current uh, it has super electronegativity properties uh, it has also has a very good cooling properties so it cools down the arc uh, also after it is extinguished but the biggest problem with sf6 gas uh, is that it is one of the most dangerous greenhouse gas so and i think that is that that one particular disadvantage is good enough to think about going sf6 free and that is the whole reason why you know most of the industries most of the manufacturer uh, and also the different electrical utilities are pushing for having sf6 free switch gear sf6 free switch gear will come for sure uh, and vacuum will take place of that now i have discussed this uh, with one of the vacuum circuit breaker expert in one of the new playlist that we have launched the electrical guy power panel i'll put links for that also down in the description you can go and watch that complete episode uh, where we discussed about how the vacuum technology works uh, then how um, will the vacuum becomes uh, the future of uh, the current interruption you'll get a lot of insights uh, and learning from that discussion definitely go and check it out now so far we talked about the interrupter of the sf6 uh, breaker now that is not sufficient to clear the arc so of course for that we need different units so you see the basic construction of sf6 circuit breaker on your screen on top we have the interrupter portion which is supported by this support insulator and from that the operating rod will be going which is connected to this operating mechanism so definitely we need to open the contacts of the circuit breaker and for that we need a certain amount of pull uh which is given by this operating mechanism very very important part in the circuit breaker 
and then we also have a support structure to support the whole assembly of the circuit breaker i have a dedicated video with in which i talk about the different key components of the sf6 circuit breaker i'll put that also down in the description so that you can go and check that out as well that is very very uh, useful if you want to learn about circuit breaker so that's all for this video guys if you found it useful and if you have understood uh, the working principle of sf6 gans then do like this video uh, and do let me know that via comment as well so thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching keep learning